I'm Cape Jewel, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we're taking a closer look at the Mighty Thor issue number 10. Roxxon Island is set to blow and take all of New York with it, and the only person who can stop it is Jane Foster Thor. Want to find out what happens next? Well, let's hop on in together and find out, shall we? Alright, so interestingly enough, this issue opens up with us heading off to the realm of the Light Elves. We haven't seen these guys in a bit ever since they got conquered by Malakath. Sir Ivory Honeyshot, which has to be one of the greatest Elves names ever written ever, one of the members of Thor's League of Realms, is leading a one-man guerrilla war against the Dark Elves. Through torture, he finds out that his queen's mind has been bewitched by the Enchantress. He plans to rescue her with the help of the other members of the League of Nations, and so he hopes that a message will be carried to Thor. Thor. That's gonna be a problem though because the Thor he knew is gone. And the current Jane Foster Thor has more than enough of her own problems to deal with right now. Roxxon Island is on a collision course with New York City and it's going to blow everything sky high. The only person who can stop all this is the Minotaur Dario Agar and his own people are already working on trying to rescue him as well. Roxxon has pulled out their elite guard. You'll remember these guys from back in that little two-shot issue where in about the Viking who drank the dragon blood and got berserker power. Yeah, that's what these guys can do. And honestly, they're going to need every dirty trick they can muster because the villains are fighting other villains in the form of Silver Samurai and Exterminatrix who want to rob Agar's vault and ruin him before they kill him. This means our two heroes, Thor and Ross Solomon, end up walking into a giant villain cluster fight that they're going to have to navigate. One of the cooler fights in this issue actually takes place between the two people who don't have superpowers. Ross and Exterminatrix get into a whole cover-based firefight, which is made all the more interesting interesting by the fact that Exterminatrix is shooting gold bullets. Man, you know you're a super villain when, right, when you can literally burn money by shooting golden bullets. Jeez, you'd be begging to get shot by at least one so you could pay off your student loans. Surprisingly, it's S.H.I.E.L.D. who actually ends up coming to the rescue here, mopping up the Roxxon and Exterminatrix foot soldiers. However, they're not really here to save the day. They're here for Jane Foster Thor. You see, the two agents who have been dogging Jane throughout this entire arc found her phone back on Asgard and inside it, some text messages between her and Sam Wilson, Captain America, and because of that, they believe they finally have undeniable proof of her identity. Of course, all of this is going to have to wait. Dario Agar manages to slip his bonds and Minotaur out, taking out Silver Samurai before eventually finding himself in the crosshair of the Exterminatrix. And shockingly, she is not a very good loser. She does have one last card up her sleeve, though, and that is a bullet made from the blood of her deceased father, Midas, which will turn anything it touches to pure gold. So yeah, it basically doesn't matter if you're a god or a monster, this bullet will kill you dead. Then again, that still doesn't stop Thor from doing the heroic thing and grabbing the bullet out of midair. Dario is safe, which means New York won't be blowing up anytime soon. Unfortunately, Thor just made a really horrible mistake and now her entire body is slowly turning to gold. She's going to need a medical miracle. She's going to need a doctor of amazing skills. She's going to need, well, Jane Foster, who ends up coming in via the Rainbow Bridge. Oh boy, how did this happen? Well, guess we're gonna have to read the next issue to find out. The Mighty Thor number 10 was another really strong issue in one of my favorite ongoing Marvel series. In fact, it was probably one of the best Marvel books of the week, mainly because it had nothing to do with the ongoing Civil War 2, which I'm glad. You know, just when I think this book is about to calm down or go in a different direction, Jason Aaron manages to totally spin into a completely different stratosphere. He really has been writing one solid epic for from God Butcher to now, and it's cool to see these things starting to pay off, like the League of Realms coming back and everything, and you know Jane's gonna have to deal with this. Now it seems like we have a completely different Jane Foster hanging around, I can only imagine where that's going to lead. Overall, I would give this issue a very strong 8.5 out of 10. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching my newest video, I hope you enjoyed it, and while you're here, why not check out another video I have on offer, or maybe if you're feeling in a supportive mood, you wanna like or subscribe. And if you wanna support the creation, of more videos just like this one, then please, by all means, check out the Cape Joel Patreon. A little bit goes a very long way, and I will see you all next time.